Okay, as we work in the purple slice again with uh, hypothesis testing, choosing the null and alternate hypothesis, uh, we will be entering the final frontier of statistics. And so hypothesis testing is one of the coolest, one of the most important topics and probably the whole reason uh, for having statistics as a uh, general education requirement because hypothesis testing allows us to basically put an idea on trial. It's a systematized critical thinking method that is just great and so there's a lot to it. We're going to take you through this step by step in several videos and this first one is more of an introduction to the whole process of how to put an idea on trial. Now, when you think about this, I would remind you here of the typical law and order episode. And so remember in your law and order reruns here, what happens is that uh, Ray and Lenny, uh, you know, the detectives are called in because uh, some jogger in Central Park has fallen, uh, fallen over this dead body and, and right away they realize that this unfortunate person has been murdered. So the detectives come in, they do some investigating, uh, they find a suspect, they arrest that suspect, take them in, then McCoy and his able associates take over and they begin to prosecute this uh, particular uh, person that they believe to be guilty and then of course the jury ultimately has to make the decision of whether this person here is innocent or guilty. Now remember in the legal system we have this term that we must prove any defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So what this means of course is that we don't have to be a hundred percent sure you know, we don't have to be 100% sure that uh, this person is guilty. We only have to be guilty, uh, we have to have evidence to prove this um, defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And so, this whole establishment of reasonable doubt and having evidence presented that is beyond that level is the key to the entire legal system of the United States. It's also key to the idea of statistics. Now we have some different terms for things here. Uh, basically, in terms of this reasonable doubt, what we have here are other terms that we will use for that. In fact, there's a number of different terms that we use in statistical hypothesis testing. So let me introduce you to this whole uh, kind of a language, a whole kind of a system. And what we will do here is kind of introduce you to this whole idea of the traditional method of hypothesis testing. Now, first of all, there is five sections to this. Now, my colleague uh, Jim Nichols uh, kind of came up with these five C's. They're very memorable. They all start with C here. And so it's a kind of a way to keep this whole outline in your, in your mind here. First of all, we have the claim section. The claim section is very much like the arrest phase of the Law and Order episode. Okay, there's certain things about this claim section that we'll go through. In fact, this section of the Alex Pie is just about getting the claim section and establishing what's called the null and alternate hypotheses and so on. It's very much like the arrest phase, though, of the Law and Order episode because if the police make a mistake, if they do not read the uh, suspect, his Miranda rights, if, if they do anything basically out of order here, then this particular case will later be thrown out of court and they will not, the state will not be able to get a conviction. If the claim section isn't done correctly, then the rest of the hypothesis test will fail. Next of all, we have these critical values and basically as I was speaking of before here, the critical value section is basically the establishment of this reasonable doubt level. The calculation section is going to be the deliberation within the jury box because what happens here is the jury examines all the evidence that the police and the detectives give them and they decide then how much evidence that they have. That evidence then is compared 
to this standard of reasonable doubt, and then a decision is made whether the suspect is considered to be guilty or not guilty. When it's all over then, there will be a conclusion. The, uh, the foreman of the jury comes out, reads uh, the jury's decision, and of course then the newspapers pick up on that and the news is published. So the conclusion section is very much like that. So as we go through a hypothesis test, we will go through these five phases every time. And then to further complicate matters, there are two basic methods. We have what's known as the traditional method, and then there is also another method which is called the p-value method, which has gained a lot of popularity recently because much of this calculation and so on can be shortcut with calculators and computers, and the p-value method is uh, very commonly used for that. So we'll end up with these two methods as well. So what we'll need to do in the next video is to go through step by step in how to write a claim section.